All right, Travis Hobson, a bunch of critics. Uh, Charles, Catalina, uh, how are you? Uh, how are you guys doing? It's good, great to talk to you about uh, barbarians. You too. Thank you. All yeah. the good. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Charles. Well, I, I gotta ask, where, where did the idea for this movie first come from? This is this is pretty twisted stuff, man. So I, I want to know where you where you got the idea from for this. Um, I mean, the idea was I was, I was interested in exploring um, the idea that uh, if you don't have the um, like a ritual or an event that you allows you to make the transition from uh, childhood to adulthood, um, you know, which we've always had as um, throughout history, if that doesn't happen, when something happens, when chaos comes, you're not properly, um, uh, you know, you're not, you're not able to deal with it. So that was the idea. And then you, I just had to create circumstances of the dinner, you know, his relationships, his current circumstances where actually there's no real uh, fallout of him being an immature person. And when I say immature, as in, you know, he doesn't speak his mind. He pleases people. He sort of skirts around difficult topics because he don't doesn't um, and, and he's lacking sort of any meaningful work. I think um, so that when chaos comes, he's uh, he's in trouble. That's interesting. So it's so to your perspective, sort of that uh, people sort of need these like 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 a right rite of passage in a sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's I think every every culture has always had that. And you know, I've always been interested in the work of Joseph Campbell, um, mm -hmm. who wrote Hero with a Thousand Faces. And the idea of, um, you know, we're sort of born not fully formed, but we're sort of, um, and then we develop as humans and we almost have to have a sort of ritual death and rebirth once we're more, uh, you know, we're sort of once we're fully formed. Um, and uh, we don't really have that anymore so we are a lot there's a lot of people walking around in a state of i guess emotional arrested development um, <laughs> a lot of movies built around that actually exactly right <laughs> catalina what was it that brought you into into the role of uh, eva here what was it that drew you uh to wanting to be a part of this everything i mean it's such an interesting script it's such an interesting uh role um she's a very strong uh, woman, she knows what she wants. She knows what she doesn't want. Um, she's determined. She is. She thinks she's very happily married, although they're going through a, a rough patch. And you all know that in the first part of the film. I mean, like you know, you you kind of like know what they're going through uh, with their relationship and why she's so in love with this guy, and you know it's it's such a i i love the way it was written i love the way that you start with four people sitting in a in a in a room dealing with um their problems i mean like it's and they just want to pretend that they're okay but you know throughout the dinner you know that they're not okay and they have little secrets and you know it's it's real it's real life you know we're just we're, we're all just gathering around the table and little by little, things are coming, unraveling. So it was just an interesting story for me. Catalina, I've been such a, a a big fan of your work for 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 such a such a long time now. And I, one of the, I guess through lines between a lot of your characters, beginning with Maria, full of grace, to to now, uh, you have a, a a way of playing strong, resourceful characters who have an idea of the things that they want out of life. Uh, is that something that you kind of look for in your in the characters that you choose and the films or film roles that you take? No, not really. Uh, what 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 I always look for in the movies that I try to do is um, it's just a reality of the character. Uh, mm -hmm. If I feel related to the character somehow, not to say that I'm not strong and you know I know what I want all the time, but I like to see myself as very you know, I, I know what I, what I want in life and I know what I don't want in life and in my career as well. I know what I want to keep working on and I know what I want to avoid. Um, so I think these characters of, of these strong women um, just find me because I'm, I think I'm looking for them as well. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for not just, especially being Latin, at the beginning of my career, I just found 
um, that I got offered or I got sent a lot of scripts about, you know, this poor Latin woman that was struggling to make a living in the States and you know, she was trying to make an American dream and, you know, not a Latins do yeah. that. I mean, like that stereotypical thing that we're, you know, they have drilled into our heads that if you're Latin, you have to have black hair, you have to have, you know, certain things and you have to be sexy or you have to be super sexy. You have to be a drug dealer. You have to be a maid. It's, it's something that I just cannot do. I just cannot see in a script. And I love when script comes my way, you know, it comes my way. And then I see the description of my, the character that they want me to read or audition or just offered with no description whatsoever. It's just a woman. It's just a name and a number. How old is she going to be? That's it. She doesn't have to be this, this and that. I think for you to, you know, for you to uh, become a character, you don't need to be, you know, a, specificity that I just really dislike and those kind of scripts I just kind of like push them away from me because I don't want to be part of the the, the the stereotypes so while reading this Eva didn't say the Latin you know great uh, uh, artist it was nothing like that she was just Eva and um, those are the kind of movies that if I read that and they have like, you know, Latin mamacita, whatever, I'm like, okay, thank you very much. I'm done. I'm not gonna read more of this. Right. And it's just presented to me as a character. Um, then of course I just keep reading. I just get very excited because it's it, it it doesn't just put me in a little box. Charles, it sounds like there's a lot of uh, a lot of collaboration between you and the actors in terms of building out these characters, uh, based on what's sort of what, what Catalina is talking about here. Uh, yes, I mean, um, I you know I definitely well, I wrote it very specifically, uh, but in you know, the the, the actors made the the roles their own, and yeah. I think you know we had a period of rehearsal uh, before we began shooting, and that you know a character is as much defined as in their relationships between others as it mm -hmm. is individually. So that was really, really important because they ended up developing it in, in tandem with one another. And then in opposition to the other, uh, other couple or, um, you know, in concert with them. So uh, yeah, it was really important to have that rehearsal period. We sort of ended up um, answering a lot of questions. I could answer them or we could figure it out uh, between us. Um, and they also got to know each other as individuals and got to know me and I, I got to know them as well. So it's the best, understand the best way to sort of work with each other. This is your, this is your directing debut. Am I, am I right about that? Yes. Your background's a little kind of in producing and, and other things as well. Um, but this as your first feature, uh, how did you find the experience? Uh, was it a big steep learning curve or how was it for you? Uh, yeah, that's an understatement. Uh, I mean, it was a very steep learning curve. Um, I mean, I, I, um, I've worked uh, quite a lot in the theatre, so uh, I think there's probably a big reason why we did that rehearsal, because it was my um, where I felt most comfortable um, and enjoyed it the most. But So I, I love working with actors, and, you know, I'd written it, so I felt uh, comfortable in the sense that I knew why I'd written things. Uh, but then, it, you know, ultimately it becomes a collaborative effort between not just the actors, but also the other sort of HODs, the, the cinematographer, um, et cetera. But uh, it's all well and good in prep, uh, but when you're on set and you're dealing with a thousand decisions to be made every minute, it's, uh, there's not a lot of time for self-doubt, which was really interesting um, because I'm often racked by that. Uh, but it was, uh, it was an am amazing experience. I really, really enjoyed it. Tricky, man. <laughs> Catalina, the this, this end up being for both of you ultimately, but Catalina, the the dinner sequence is incredibly intense and very, uh, uh, very tight with tension, like a whole whole way through. How is it like to perform something like that when you got you know it's just four people, but essentially the movie's four people sitting across one another, and the tension is always mounting in their conversation. What's it like? The dynamic between the actors during something where it's something that viscerally tense. How, what is it like for you? <laughs> well, the good thing about this was that we we genuinely liked each other. 
Mm. So sometimes we were just talking before mm. and Charlie was like, no, 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 just keep talking as if like nothing happened. Yeah. And I think that helped because we were just chatting about life. We were just chatting about, you know, you know, certain uh, subjects that were part of what we were going to say afterwards, like our actual lines. Mm. So I think it was just a very conversational part of you know that that process of i mean like we didn't sit down and be like okay your line my line it was just we were just chatting and then when charlie would call call cut we would just still be sitting in the chair just like so about what you know like it was just something very organic would happened and i think it helped us tremendously charles what was it like shooting that scene for you what were some of the influences that you drew from uh yeah what was that like um the uh because you could have easily just kept the movie at that and not had everything that comes after i know i mean i love i yeah I, 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 that was definitely my favorite uh bit just because we shot really long takes um of that and i loved it the uh there's a film called force majeure uh, mm -hmm. oh yeah which was a big influence on that uh how how i'd shoot that um and uh you know the, there was yeah, you know, I broke it up into uh, starters, main course, and dessert, because and then uh, coffee, and so that's how I wrote it. And each bit had a different shooting style. I mean, it was, uh, uh, I mean, it would depend. You know, certainly towards the end, the dynamic between um, Ever and Lucas was important, mm -hmm. but at the very beginning, it was you know, uh, the two couples sort of, uh, not against one another, but it was certainly, you know, it did seem like they were squaring off a little bit. Exactly. Right. It was team, <laughs> certainly teams. Um, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I could have done that all day. I loved doing that. And yeah. And, and it was really great to get, you know, cause the actors did, you know, talking and I, and I didn't like to have that sort of harsh start of just sort of gently stalking, talking, and then just going straight into the lines, which were, um, which we'd rehearsed already. Well, you two, this has been fantastic. I appreciate you guys taking a few minutes to talk to me about Barbarians. Good luck on the film, and uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thanks for checking out the show. If you like what we're laying down, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest stuff.